Hi everyone, this is Mix from Sneaks and PH, and today we have the detailed review of the Adidas Team Act 2 Restomod SVSM. Before we get started, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also be leaving a link to the SNBPH Sneak Around This Facebook group in the description box. So I do hope you can join us over there because that is a place where we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit. And it's also where we have the SNBPH Steel Cabinet where I as well as a lot of our other members take some shoes that we no longer use and put them up for bidding at way below market value. Then if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. Then with that being said, we do have the detailed review on the Adidas Team Act 2 Restomod SVSM. The Adidas Team Act 2 Restomod SVSM or St. Vincent St. Mary is the latest retro or Restomod of an Adidas LeBron James PE. LeBron did wear a lot of these Adidas shoes in his high school days at St. Vincent St. Mary and he had quite a few PEs with the most well-known ones being the Team Act 1, the Team Act 2, and the Adidas Pro model. This 2022, I do think they're releasing all three in Restomod form so I am definitely pretty excited for that as a big LeBron fan. He also was a really big fan of T-Mac, so just having the T-Mac 2 Restomod in the SBSM colorway is kind of like hitting two birds with one stone. Now like I said a while ago, Adidas will be releasing all three LeBron PEs in Restomod form. And I mean that is great and I'm really excited for the T-Mac 2 as well as the Pro model. But for the T-Mac 1, I think the timing is just pretty weird and it's pretty similar to what happened with the D-Rose 1.5. The T-Mac 1 and D-Rose 1.5 are both releasing in 2020 as Restomod versions. But as some of you may know, the D-Rose 1.5 and T-Mac 1 also retroed just a couple of years ago. I actually do have a review of the T-Mac 1 that released two years ago and those were definitely pretty nice especially for me as a LeBron shoe collector but just having the Restomod version released two years after is just pretty awkward and I'll probably pass on those and keep my retro pair from two years ago. On the positive side though just having that team up one in that Restomod form will definitely be good news for the ones who passed up on the last retro or who liked the last retro but wanted a little bit more comfort. Moving back to this particular shoe though, I think Adidas did a really good job just having the colors pretty accurate and the shape pretty accurate because what I've seen from pictures of LeBron in high school, it pretty much looks just the same as these. I also do like how they gave this the rest of mud treatment because it just makes the cushion a little bit better than how it was originally and in the end that actually makes this shoe pretty playable in 2022. I am definitely tempted to try this out on court and I probably will eventually just because I think it's still a pretty capable hoop shoe after all these years. So to explain why I think this isn't just a retro that you walk around casually with and you can actually hoop in these, let's take a look at the tech specs. So starting off the tech specs with the traction, you do have a full length solid rubber outsole with this herringbone pattern all throughout. Like I always say, herringbone is a tried and true traction pattern and historically speaking, at least in my own personal experience, if, if you see a herringbone pattern at the bottom of your shoe, 9 times out of 10, it's gonna be a pretty grippy outsole. I am happy to say that the T-Map 2 doesn't only have a grippy herringbone pattern, but it also has really tacky rubber as well. Just trying these out here at home on my wood floors, it was just gripping super hard to the floor. And in my experience with the T-Map 2 since we did review one a few months back, it just has a super strong bite and is overall an awesome traction. For the durability though, given that the shoe released in the mid 2000s, it does have pretty hard rubber. But the only downside is that the pattern is a bit shallow. I still do think though that the traction will be above average in terms of the durability. So overall given that durability as well as how tacky and grippy the outsole is, I just really think the traction is amazing. Then moving on to the cushion, this is basically the Restomod part of the shoe because they did replace the cushion from Adibreen Plus to Bounce. Back in the mid 2000s and even up to like the D Rose line, Adipreen was used a lot. And I guess for the time it was okay, but looking back and you know trying out shoes with Adipreen Plus nowadays, it's just definitely so far behind from the cushion technologies we have today. With that being said, I am so happy that they ditched that Adipreen Plus and changed it to Bounce. I mean of course it is a double last midsole which means the upper is connected to the outsole, so the Bounce doesn't really have a lot of room to like expand and compress, but it still overall adds quite a bit of comfort, especially when compared to Adipreen Plus. 
Given that the midsole is double last, you do feel pretty stable and low to the ground, but you also feel that bounce cushion underfoot. That bounce midsole isn't too thick on this shoe though, so don't really expect it to be like the Dame 5 or like the Dame 3 or Dame 2, and it's more of just a subtle comfort or subtle softness that you feel with the shoe. Then moving on to the materials, this particular colorway of the T-Mac 2 comes with a full-on patent leather upper. This pretty shiny patent leather that they used isn't actual leather though, it's more of a synthetic, but it does feel surprisingly soft, especially here in the forefoot. Here in the forefoot, that leather is perforated, so I think it'll help with the airflow, and it is just pretty soft and malleable, especially for synthetic patent leather. Here at the back half of the shoe, that patent leather does seem like it's a little bit thicker, but it still is also pretty soft. You also have a nice and padded inner boot, and this actually goes all the way around, and is just connected by a bungee here on the lateral side, and it is just super padded and gives you a really cozy and comfy feel. The materials aren't anything to write home about because that patent leather is pretty synthetic feeling, but it is really comfy around your foot, surprisingly soft and malleable, and it is just such a throwback to the early and mid 2000s. Then moving on to fit and sizing, I did go up half a size in the T-Mac 2 Restomod, and it fits me pretty well. In my past review of that white and blue or Orlando home T-Mac 2, I actually went through the size, but I did keep running into problems with regard to the fit because for one, it was super hard to get my foot in and out of the shoe, two, it just did feel pretty snug, and three, given that the inner boot was just super padded, it also made my foot look really fat when it was in the shoe. That's why I did end up going up half a size with this particular colorway, and even though I do have a bit of extra length here at the tip of the toe, going up half a size was definitely the right choice in my opinion. I don't have as much of a hard time getting my foot in and out of the shoe. The shoe looks a lot more normal with my foot inside the shoe and not so puffed up, and it doesn't feel as snug, especially here at the midfoot. I still do think though if you like a super snug fit or if you have a narrow foot, you can go down half a size. If you do have a normal width foot, I think you can go up half a size, especially if you don't like a super duper snug fit, or if you're like me and you don't like it when it takes forever to get your foot inside the shoe. For wide footers as well, I think it's a good option to go up half a size, or maybe even a full size just because it's really hard to get your foot in the shoe. Then moving on to the aesthetic details, I think overall the shoe is very simple, but you do have some nice small touches. So starting off with the outsole, you do have green solid rubber all throughout, and peeking out here at the midfoot, you have the Adidas torsion system. The torsion system does wrap up all the way to the midfoot part of the midsole, then here at the heel part of that torsion system, you actually have these three lines which represent the three stripes of Adidas. Then here at the forefoot of the shoe, you do have that rubber that comes up, and here at the lateral side, you have that bounce branding. Interestingly enough, this tiny bounce branding here at the lateral side of the outsole is basically the only way you can find out this is a restomod without owning the shoe. So I like how, you know, it does show that it is a restomod, but it's really subtle. Then moving on to the upper, it is mostly that SBSM green, since you have it on the patent leather that goes all throughout, as well as the inner boot. You also do have hits of gold on the upper though, like these stripes that kind of run through the forefoot. Foot. This gold line here at the heel as well that kind of terminates on the medial side with this gradient. And then for your bits of branding, you do have the Adidas logo in gold here at the top of the tongue. Your T-Mac logo in gold here on the lateral side of the ankle. You also have a debossed Adidas 3 stripes here on the lateral side of the midfoot. And on the medial side, it is pretty creative how they put the Adidas branding because they just put it as perforations. I definitely do love those hits of gold and there is so much green on the shoe. And it just really pops out, especially when you compare it to the mostly white T-Mac 1 SV. SM. Then moving on to the overall aesthetics, I think this shoe as well as the other T-Mac shoes are just super unique in terms of their overall appearance. They do have a pretty unique shape and pretty unique color blocking and especially in this SBSM colorway where there's just so much green just right in your face and hits of gold, it definitely is I think a shoe that you either love or you hate. The SBSM basketball team are called the Fighting Irish so it's definitely why this shoe is green and gold. And if you're a fan of these colors or these are your school colors as well, I think this is definitely a nice way of repping it just because there is so much of it. But for the common basketball shoe fan, I'm not really sure if you'll be attracted to the shoe just because the overall shape is pretty out there and the colors are definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Like I said a while ago though, I like those touches of gold and I especially do like that deep boss 3 stripes here at the midfoot just because I think it's a really unique way to place the branding on the shoe. Then moving on to the price, the Adidas T-Mac 2 Restomod SVSM retails for 7,000 pesos here in the Philippines or 130 US dollars. I do think 130 is a pretty reasonable price for a retro or 
maybe I'm just used to Nike Retros being really expensive. But if you look at it from like a collector's point of view or a fan of LeBron's point of view, there's definitely a shoe and colorway that if they didn't bring it back, you might never be able to buy again. But even if you aren't a fan and you just want a pretty good hoop shoe, I definitely think this is pretty playable given as how they replaced Adibreen Plus with Bounce. Still not gonna be the best shoe though, so I think it really comes down to if you like how the shoe looks, if you like the history, and if you also wanna play in a retro shoe, because these definitely can perform on court. I did get my pair over at the Adidas Philippines website, so you can check it over there. And I was actually also able to use my birthday discount to get this shoe. If you don't know, Adidas does have a member program wherein if it's your birth month, you can get 15% off. So I definitely think if you want to buy some Adidas kicks for your birthday, you might want to consider becoming a member. And then if you do live in the US, I think these release on Feb 17. So if you want to play in these or you're a St. Vincent, St. Mary fan, a LeBron fan, or a DMAC fan, just mark your calendars for the 17th and check them out at your Adidas stores or the Adidas website. So there you have it guys, that was my detailed review on the Adidas DMAC 2 Restomod SVSM. Once again, if you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for notifications. Then as always, whether you're looking for that retail win or if you're the chosen one from Akron, Ohio, just keep on hunting.